ऑल इन रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम अनुजा कुमार एंड विथ मी इज वैभव ज्योत्सना श्रीवास्तव द हेडलाइंस एटलीस्ट एटीन पीपल किल्ड इन अ प्लेन क्रैश एट कोरिकोर एयरपोर्ट इन केरला सेंटर आस्क स्टेट्स एंड यूनियन टेरिटरीज टू कंडक्ट कोरोना टेस्ट ऑफ ऑल ग्रोसरी शॉप वर्कर्स एंड स्ट्रीट वेंडर्स टू कंट्रोल द पैंडेमिक प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी टू इनोग्रेट राष्ट्रीय स्वच्छता केंद्र टूडे गुजरात गवर्नमेंट अनाउंसेज न्यू इंडस्ट्रियल पॉलिसी इन लाइन विद आत्मनिर्भर भारत अभियान इंडियाज फॉरन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व सर्ज टू एन ऑल टाइम हाई ऑफ फाइव हंड्रेड And in cricket, India to host ICC Men's T20 World Cup in 2021 and Australia in 2022. Women's T20 World Cup postponed till 2022. At least 18 people, including two pilots, died when an Air India Express aircraft from Dubai crashed after overshooting the runway in Kodikor last night. 162 people have been injured 15 of them are in serious condition rescue operations at the site have been completed and all injured people have been admitted to hospitals in Mallapuram and Kodikor there were 191 people including 10 infants two pilots and five cabin crew on board the aircraft dgca said the dubai kodikor air india express flight fell 35 feet from the hilltop runway after landing at karipur airport and broke down in two pieces while the two pilots are among the dead four cabin crew members on board the aircraft are safe it is believed that heavy rains in kerala could be one of the reasons behind the mishap civil aviation minister hardeep singh puri said two investigation teams of professionals from air india airport authority of india and aircraft accident investigation bureau have been rushed to kodikor President Ram Nath Kovind spoke to Kerala Governor Arif Muhammad Khan and inquired about the situation expressing deep distress he said his thoughts and prayers are with the affected passengers crew members and their families Vice President Venkaiah Naidu has expressed deep anguish at the loss of lives in the tragic air mishap at Kozhikode airport in a tweet the vice president extended condolences to the families who lost their dear ones in the crash and hoped for the speedy recovery of the injured prime minister narendra modi spoke to kerala chief minister pinarayi vijayan and inquired about the situation expressing pain over the accident the prime minister said his thoughts are with those who lost their loved ones the prime minister also wished speedy recovery to those injured home minister amit shah said he is distressed to learn about the tragic accident in a tweet he said ndrf was instructed to reach the site and assist in rescue operations external affairs minister s j shankar mos external affairs v murli dharan and bjp mp k j alfons also expressed deep distress over the accident union health minister dr harsh vardhan spoke to kerala health minister k k shailaja regarding rescue and medical support for those injured in the air crash dr harsh vardhan assured her of maximum support from the center for those who are being treated at various city hospitals external affairs ministry has issued helpline numbers these are 1800 118797 1800 118 2301113 and +9111230179905 Indian consulate in Dubai's helpline number is +9714207944 Helpline issued by Mallapuram District Administration are 8 3 3005468 and 0483271943 The Health Ministry has asked states and union territories to take up coronavirus testing of grocery shop workers, vegetable and other vendors. It stated that if undetected grocery workers can potentially spread the infection to a large number of people. In a letter to states and union territories Secretary Ministry of Health Rajesh Bhushan also stressed 
the need for operationalizing ambulance transport system with oxygen facility and quick response mechanism. He underlined that refusal rate of ambulances must be monitored at a daily basis and brought down to zero. With the pandemic now spreading to newer areas in the country, Mr. Bhushan said there are likely to be scattered cases, cluster of cases or large outbreaks in districts. He said the primary aim is to control outbreaks, especially in new locations, and to save lives at all costs. He said the aim should be to further reduce mortality and ensure that it does not cross the 1% mark. The Secretary pointed out that early detection of cases through aggressive testing, prompt isolation or admission in a healthcare facility and ensuring proper clinical management are major components of mortality reduction. He stressed on enhanced surveillance for influenza-like illness and severe acute respiratory illness as their symptoms are mostly the same as of COVID. He also asked states and union territories to undertake weekly death audits to assess the determinants of death such as age differentials, comorbidities, late reporting to hospital and clinical protocols that were followed. This will help identify challenges to be addressed and will facilitate effective case reporting and ensure timely and required medical interventions. In the letter, Mr. Bhushan also said that a regular house-to-house -house search must be done periodically to identify those who are at high risk. A high-level virtual meeting was chaired by Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan to engage with the district and state administration reporting higher COVID-19 mortality. The meeting was held to analyze factors driving high COVID-19 mortality in these districts and devise ways and means to reduce it. These include 16 districts in Gujarat, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Telangana. Apart from the higher case mortality, these districts account for 17% of India's active cases, high daily new cases, low tests per million and high confirmation percentage. These districts were advised to ensure that the advisories, guidelines and clinical treatment protocols issued by the Health Ministry are adopted and effectively implemented to reduce the mortality among the COVID-19 patients. Participating in a live phone-in program on COVID-19, Dr. A.K. Varshne, Senior Medical Consultant at Ram Manohar Lohia Hospital, said that the virus can spread easily in closed rooms. He said it is necessary to provide air ventilation to minimize the infection risk. लेकिन जाके वो बंद एरिया है वेंटिलेशन नहीं हो रहा तो वायरस उसी एरिया में लगातार सर्कुलेट करता रहता है कोशिश यही करें कि अगर वेंटिलेशन पॉसिबल है दरवाजे जैसे उनमें डोर क्लोजर लगे हुए हैं तो उनको आप या तो हटा सकते हैं या तो डोर क्लोजर को रोकने के लिए करें जिससे कि वो दरवाजा खुला रहे वेंटिलेशन बना रहे कहीं एग्जॉस्ट लगा हुआ तो उस एग्जॉस्ट को चला दें द सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंडिया हैज एंटर्ड इनटू अ न्यू लैंडमार्क पार्टनरशिप विद गावी एंड द बिल एंड मिलिंडा गेट्स फाउंडेशन the partnership aims to accelerate the production of up to 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines for India and other low- and middle-income countries. In a statement, the world's largest vaccine manufacturer, Serum Institute of India, said it is important to make sure that the most remote and poor countries of the world have access to affordable cure and preventive measures to contain the pandemic. It said through this association, the company will ramp up the efforts to save the lives of millions of people from the dreadful disease. More from our correspondent. India has become one of the front runners in the global effort to develop vaccine for the containment of COVID-19 pandemic. In the new arrangement, Serum Institute of India will get the funding from the Gates Foundation through International Vaccine Alliance, Gavi. The funding will provide support to vaccine makers for potential vaccines candidates from AstraZeneca and Novavax. Company has set an affordable ceiling price of three dollar per dose. Earlier, Serum Institute of India had backed the contract with British drug maker AstraZeneca to supply one billion doses of Oxford University's potential COVID-19 vaccine. Recently, American company Novavax has entered a supply and license agreement with the Serum Institute of India for the development and commercialization of its COVID-19 vaccine candidate. Bhupendra Singh, AIR News, Delhi. In Gujarat, 1,074 new cases of COVID-19 were recorded yesterday. According to the State Health Department, the recovery rate improved further and reached up to 75.04%. More from our correspondent. 
टोटल केसेस ऑफ कोविड 19 इन द स्टेट हैव गोन अप टू 68,885 आउट ऑफ 14,587 एक्टिव केसेस इन द स्टेट द कंडीशंस ऑफ 86 पेशेंट्स आर सीरियस एट द अदर एंड 1,370 पेशेंट्स हैव बीन डिस्चार्ज फ्रॉम वेरियस हॉस्पिटल्स आफ्टर रिकवरी विद दिस द टोटल पेशेंट्स रिकवर्ड फ्रॉम कोविड 19 टिल डेट हैव गोन अप टू 51,692 22 पेशेंट्स हैव लॉस्ट देयर लाइफ यस्टरडे टेकिंग द टोटल डेथ ड्यू टू कोविड 19 इन द state up to 2606 more than 930000 tests have been carried out in the state till date out of which 26591 tests have been carried out yesterday door to door surveillance and mass screening will be launched in the new areas from today yogesh pandya air news ahmedabad the maharashtra government has directed the district authorities and municipal commissioners of the state to appoint a team to ensure that private hospitals in the state are abiding by the instructions pertaining to charging fees for treating corona patients in this regard the principal secretary of the health department dr pradeep vyas has sent letters to all the divisional commissioners collectors municipal commissioners and instructed them to submit the investigation report to the government within 3 days Health Minister Rajesh Tope informed yesterday that a large number of teams have been appointed in the state for assuring implementation of the instructions issued by the government from time to time more from our correspondent It has been decided to implement Mahatma Jyoti Bhule Jan Aarogya Yojana for all citizens of the state on May 23rd and as per the government decision the maximum rates for transporting of patients have been fixed after acquiring many private vehicles as ambulances it also directed the private hospitals to make the beds available and to implement the notification effectively there have been complaints of overcharging from corona infected patients being treated in private hospitals taking note of this the health minister has directed the district collectors and municipal commissioners as well as the divisional commissioners to appoint a team at their level which will ensure that the private hospitals are abiding by the rule issued by the government devupre bhattacharjee aiya news mumbai in karnataka the covid-19 case load is spiking every day with 6670 new cases recorded yesterday total cases till date at 1,64,924. 101 covid deaths were reported yesterday and the total death toll has risen to 2998 The mortality rate of the state is 1.81%. More from our correspondent. The state recovery rate is slightly improving every day with 51.07% reported yesterday. 3951 patients were cured and discharged from various hospitals yesterday and the total number of recovered people have gone up to 84232. 77686 active cases are taking treatment across the state among them 678 patients are in ICU. In a single day yesterday 43553 swab samples were tested and the total tests have increased to 16,24,628. Meanwhile, the Karnataka government has simplified the guidelines on handling of the COVID-19 victims' bodies, allowing families to perform religious rituals. According to the guidelines, hospitals should hand over the dead body in a dignified manner immediately after the death, following the necessary protocols issued by the government. Har Murthy, AAR News, Bengaluru. In Tamil Nadu the total covid-19 infection has gone up to over 285000 with 5880 new cases reported yesterday the number of those discharged after recovery has surpassed the 227000 as nearly 6500 patients returned home post recovery in the last 24 hours more from our correspondent In a positive development, Chennai witnessed less than 1,000 new cases of COVID-19, that is 984 people yesterday. This is the first time the city's everyday tally went below the 1,000 mark after more than a month. Meanwhile, the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Yadapadi Palani Swami has said the state will go for public transport only in a calibrated manner. In the COVID-19 review meeting held at Thirunal Veli yesterday, he said though the economic activities are being given the most possible thrust in the present situation, opening up of the public transport is a tricky area as human lives are more valuable. Jai Singh, AAR News, Chennai. Bihar reported the highest single day spike of 3646 COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours. With this the total number of positive cases mounted to 71794. Patients who had recovered so far are 46265. 
25,128 patients are undergoing treatment in various hospitals. 400 patients died due to the virus. Recovery rate is over 64%. Chief Minister Nitish Kumar instructed health officials to ensure tests of those who are keen on getting it done. He also instructed to increase the number of beds at all dedicated COVID hospitals and also ensure supply of oxygen through pipeline to the maximum beds. You are listening to the Morning News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. At least 18 people killed in a plane crash at Korikod Airport in Kerala. Centre asks states and union territories to conduct corona tests of all grocery shop workers and street vendors to control the pandemic. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate Rashtriya Swachhata Kendra today. Gujarat government announces new industrial policy in line with Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhyan. India's foreign exchange reserves surged to an all-time high of $534.568 billion. And in cricket, India to host ICC Men's T20 World Cup in 2021 and Australia in 2022. Women's T20 World Cup postponed till 2022. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate Rashtriya Swachhata Kendra, an interactive experience center on the Swachh Bharat mission today. A tribute to Mahatma Gandhi, the Rashtriya Swachhata Kendra was first announced by the Prime Minister on 10th of April 2017 on the occasion of the centenary celebrations of Gandhiji's Champaran Satyagra. Our correspondent reports that the visitors will experience a unique 360-degree audio-visual immersive show. It will narrate India's Swachhata story, a journey into the largest behavior change campaign in the history of the world. The Swachh Bharat mission has transformed rural sanitation in the country and has changed the behavior of over 55 crore people from open defecation to using a toilet. The installations at Rashtriya Swachhata Kendra will introduce future generations to the successful journey of world's largest behavioral change campaign, the Swachh Bharat Mission. A balanced mix of digital and outdoor installations in the Kendra will impart information, awareness and education on Swachhata and related aspects. Prime Minister will also interact with 36 school students from Delhi, representing the 36 states and union territories adhering to social distancing protocols. With Dipendra Kumar, Suparna Saikya, AIR News, Delhi. Today is the 78th anniversary of Quit India Movement. On this day in 1942, father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi gave the clarion call of do or die to all the Indians to drive away Britishers from the country. The movement had begun from Gavalia Tank in Mumbai. The day is observed as August Kranti Day every year. The Narendra Modi government has laid emphasis on the skilling of youth and employment generation. The schemes like Startup India, Skill India, Digital India, Make in India and Kalo India were brought in the last five years by the government with a view to empower the youth as empowered youth leads to an empowered nation. Talking exclusively to AIR News, Skill Development Minister Dr. Mahindra Nath Pandey said, under the Skill India mission, government is providing employment as well as opportunity of self-employment to the youth of the country. Vishwa Yuva Kausal Divas Ke Din, Adani Pradhan Mantri Sri Narendra Modi Ji ne, Skilling, Reskilling, Upskilling, Iski Itani Saral Biyakya Ki, Mai Usi Baat To Bal Dete Vye, Swatantra Ke Agami Utsav Ke Mokyo Par, Bharat Ke Andar Yuvao Ko, Or Bharat Vasi Yuvao Ko, Jho Vishwa Bhar Me Hai, Mai Avahan Karna Chahun Ga, Ki Modi Ji Ki Us Biyakya Ko, Jise Skilling Ko Ek Junoon Ke Roop Me Bhi, अभियान के रूप में लेने की जरूरत है उस दिशा में नौजवान आगे आए रोजगार के अवसर भी उन्हें मिले और वे स्वयं भी रोजगार अपने उद्यमों के माध्यम से देश के जरूरतमंदों को देने में सक्षम हो आर कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट रिपोर्ट्स दैट इवन ड्यूरिंग द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल द नेशंस यूथ हैड प्लेड अ बिग रोल अंडर द लीडरशिप ऑफ महात्मा गांधी the nation is celebrating the 78th anniversary of the Quit India movement, which was an important milestone in the Indian freedom struggle. The Gujarat government has announced the new industrial policy. Chief Minister Vijay Rupani announced the new policy at a press conference in Gandhinagar yesterday. 
He said that the new industrial policy is divided in 15 thrust areas in core sectors and sunrise sectors. He said that in core sectors, the thrust areas will be electrical machinery and equipment, industrial machinery and equipment, auto and auto components, ceramics, technical textiles, agro and food processing, pharmaceuticals and medical devices, gems and jewellery, and chemicals. While sunrise sectors will have thrust areas like Industry 4.0 manufacturing, electric vehicle and its components, waste management projects, green energy, including solar and wind equipment, an eco-friendly compostable material for substitutes to traditional plastics. Thrust on 100% export-oriented units will be given irrespective of the sector. Our Ahmedabad correspondent reports that the new industrial policy 2020 is in line with the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan of the centre. The new policy will replace the old policy which expired on the 31st of December 2019. Due to the large amount of groundwater exploitation in the country, many areas have less groundwater level. Two tehsils of Ratlam district in Madhya Pradesh, Jawara and Piploda have the same story. However, Jal Shakti mission of the central government is a ray of hope for these areas. A report. The two tehsils, Jawara and Piploda, are included in those places in the country where the maximum exploitation of groundwater has taken place. The water level has gone down from 800 to 1200 feet in these areas. To replenish groundwater under the Jal Shakti mission, vertical water recharge technique is being adopted in these areas. The Tlam SDM Rahul Dhote told AIR that this technique will not only save the rainwater but will also help to stop the flood. तो जो वर्टिकल रिचार्ज मेथड इससे क्या होगा कि तालाब के पास या ऐसे पॉइंट जहां पर पानी स्टोर होता है वहां पर हम एक्यूपर बनाएंगे तो वो एक स्टोरेज सिस्टम जैसा बनता है तो सेकंड एक्यूपर में पानी भरना शुरू हुआ और इधर से थर्ड फ्लोर तक वो पहुंचेगा दिस एफर्ट इज न्यू नॉट ओनली फॉर द डिस्ट्रिक्ट बट आल्सो फॉर द कंट्री फार्मर्स आर आल्सो वेरी हैप्पी विद दिस मिशन पानी के लिए प्रशासन और सरकार आज जो प्रयास कर रही है सराहनीय है आने वाले समय में निश्चित ही इस पानी का किसानों को फायदा मिलेगा द जल शक्ति मिशन हैज नाउ सोन द ड्रीम ऑफ ग्रीनरी टू दिस एरिया होपफुली दिस ड्रीम विल बिकम ए रियलिटी इन द कमिंग ईयर विद अदिति मिश्रा फ्रॉम रतलाम संजीव शर्मा ए आई आर न्यूज भोपाल इंडिया फॉरन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व हैव सर्च बाई ए मैसिव इलेवन पॉइंट नाइन थ्री एट बिलियन डॉलर टू रीच ए न्यू ऑल टाइम हाई ऑफ फाइव हंड्रेड थर्टी फोर पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स एट बिलियन डॉलर इन द वीक एंडेड ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ जुलाई दिस ईयर फॉरन करेंसी एसेट्स अ मेजर पार्ट ऑफ द ओवरऑल रिजर्व इंक्रीज बाई टेन पॉइंट थ्री फोर सेवन बिलियन डॉलर टू फोर हंड्रेड नाइन्टी पॉइंट एट टू नाइन बिलियन डॉलर In the previous week, the reserves had swelled by $4.993 billion to end at $522.630 billion. Reserve Bank of India Governor Shakti Kant Das has said that the reserves are equivalent to 13.4 months of imports. He added that the reserves have risen by $56.8 billion in this fiscal so far. Gold reserves also went up by $1.525 billion to end at $37.625 billion. India's special drawing rights with the International Monetary Fund inched higher by $12 million to reach $1.475 billion, while the country's reserve position also went up by $54 million to $4.639 billion. Indian men's hockey team captain Manpreet Singh Defenders Surendra Kumar and Jaskaran Singh and drag flicker Varun Kumar have been tested positive for COVID-19. All players camping in SAI Bangalore campus are in self-quarantine as their test results are awaited. The players had returned to the National Hockey Camp in Bangalore following a month-long break. The hockey camp is being held in the National Center of Excellence in SAI Bangalore. Ten athletes who had travelled along with other members have also undergone the RT-PCR test. International Cricket Council has said that India will host the ICC Men's T20 World Cup 2021 as planned. ICC confirmed that Men's T20 World Cup 2020 that was postponed due to the pandemic will be held in Australia in 2022. Cricket's governing body has also decided to postpone the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup 2021 in New Zealand till February-March 2022 due to the impact the pandemic has had on cricket globally. 
The format of the ICC Men's T20 World Cup 2021 will remain as it is for the 2020 World Cup format and all teams that qualified for that event will now participate in India in 2021. As heavy rain continues in Kerala, death toll in the massive landslide that hit Rajamala in Iduki district of Kerala has reached 17. Rescue and search operations restarted this morning for the missing persons, as many are feared to be buried under the soil. 54 people are reported to be missing. Adverse weather is hampering the relief operations. Heavy rain is continuing across the state, which has caused widespread damage. Major rivers are overflowing and low-lying regions are flooded in northern and central Kerala. Med Department predicts very heavy rain in the state in coming days. Now let us take a look at today's weather update. The national capital Delhi may have generally cloudy sky with light rain. The minimum temperature was recorded at 26 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 35 degrees. Mumbai will see a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. The minimum temperature was 25 and the maximum temperature will be around 32. Chennai will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The temperature will hover between 27 and 36 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature in the metropolis was 27, while the maximum will be around 32. On to the north, in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature in Jammu was 28, while the maximum will be around 35. The city may see rain or thunder showers towards afternoon or evening. In Srinagar, the minimum temperature was 20, while the maximum will be around 32. The city will have a mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night. Ladakh will have a mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. The temperature will hover between 19 and 30. In Gilgit, the temperature will hover between 19 and 36. It will see a mainly clear sky. In Muzaffarabad, there will be mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night. The minimum temperature was 21, while the maximum will be around 36 degrees. And now an overview of today's newspapers. The top headline in all the dailies cover the tragic news of the plane crash overshooting the runway while landing at Kurikod Airport. The Times of India writes, Air India plane falls into valley, both pilots dead. Vaccine hunt in late stage, two top panels coordinating and monitoring efforts, reports the Indian Express. Amid build-up, Next, India-China meet on LAC hotspot, Deepsang, is the lead in the Tribune. Soon after swearing in, the second lieutenant governor of Jammu and Kashmir sends out a message for a need to start Kashmir dialogue for peace and stability, notes the Hindustan Times. BCCI dials India Inc. for IPL title sponsorship is a headline in the Economic Times. Citing the Italian marine case accused of killing two fishermen in 2012, the Hindu quotes, the Supreme Court saying will close Marine's case only after hefty compensation. And finally, tired of Zoom calls, a Los Angeles firm has created phone booth-sized machines to beam live holograms into your living room, looking for a new way to communicate during the pandemic, is a story in the Financial Express. In some more news, Panchayati Raj Minister Narendra Singh Tomar has said that Sarpanchas and elected representatives of Panchayats should perform their responsibility for the overall development of villages. He said Panchayat representatives should also come forward to work on subjects like education, health and nutrition so that every village in the country can move forward on the path of complete development. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. At least 18 people killed in a plane crash at Korikor Airport in Kerala. Centre asks states and union territories to conduct corona tests of all grocery shop workers and street vendors to control the pandemic. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate Rashtriya Swachhata Kendra today. Gujarat government announces new industrial policy in line with Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan. India's foreign exchange reserves surged to an all-time high of $534.568 billion. And in cricket, India to host ICC Men's T20 World Cup in 2021 and Australia in 2022. Women's T20 World Cup postponed till 2022. 
And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.